Howdy my friends, this is Sky Hurricane 89 and welcome to a little special project here that I've been wanting to do for a long time and this is to celebrate my 1400 subscribers and so this is a little special here and uh, I'm going to try to be as thorough in my explanation as I can but if I do not explain very well in the uh, in the video please do, don't hesitate to look at the description because I'll try to explain everything more you know more thorough and and better there but uh, and also if you have any questions just let me know this special project is going to be about how to hack zombies at my neighbors if you've been following me you've you may have seen my hack with zombies at my neighbors and uh, you may or may not like it but it's a it's a pretty thorough hack and I'm also in the process of making a new hack my brutal hack and so kind of talk more about that later but this first little part here is going to be mainly the basics and I am going to show you I'm going to go through the whole process of editing one level but of course the very beginning of here of this I want to show you the basics that you'll need to know that can help you um, and this is all to use the uh, piranha plant editor the, the newest editor made in 2010 by piranha plant and I really like it it's pretty user friendly and you know it it's pretty easy I mean one thing you should know about this though is you have to be patient you can't expect to you can't expect this to go perfect I mean I've run into so many snags um, so many different things that uh, can you know kind of make you mad when you're doing this but you have to be patient you can, and number two you have to devote a lot of time to doing this I mean on average it takes me two to four hours to do that, to do any level so to do each level and there are 55 levels total so you can kind of imagine how long that would take it's not something you're going to get done you know in just a week and <laughs> unless you're just insane and have nothing nothing else going on but uh those are the main things and then of course number three y'all just have fun doing this i do want to thank piranha plan i don't know if they'll, he or she will ever see this but i do want to thank them for creating such a great level editor. I think it's uh, quite nice that they did that. And also my buddy Joseph K, who is also work, working on his own hack, and he, he and I have exchanged a lot of uh, insights and everything. I started my first hack first, you know, of course, and I finished and everything, but I kind of got him into doing it. But we've learned quite a bit of quite a bit about it together. But at any rate, y'all, let's get right into this. So one thing to note is this is my local C disk on a, my laptop. I usually don't, I actually never use my laptop for recording videos, but uh, I'm actually uh, have it connected to my Elgato via HDMI cord. So that's kind of how I'm recording this. So um, I have different folders set up here, and I have one for game emulators. Which in order to test your hack. You're either going to want to use the BSNES or the ZSNES, which I actually really like the ZSNES best. And I may provide a link to that in the description. I may also provide a link in the description for Piranha Plants editors. I think that'd be a good idea for me to put all those links in there. And I have a folder set up for game ROMs as well. And you can see all my game ROMs that I have. Of course, uh, this isn't the main computer that I use, you know. So I don't have all my game ROMs on this, but you know, I have what I need to do my hacking at least. Now, one thing to note, before you do anything, you obviously are going to have to have an original unmodified Zombies Ain't My Neighbors ROM. So in this folder, I have all originals here. I have the beta, the oh no, more Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, which will not open in Piranha Plates Editor. I can't get it to open anyway. And, uh... This right here, the one with the U and the parenthesis and exclamation mark, all that, this is the original file here. So you want to have you want to have a couple of these. So you're going to want to have one unmodified, and you're going to make a copy of that, and then you're going to rename it whatever you're naming your hack. You could just say ZAM in hack or whatever. And uh, right now I'm working on my brutal zombies at my neighbor's hack. So, and uh, since if I'm going to test this out, of course I have my USB USB Super Nintendo controller adapter and stuff, so I, I use that. It really helps to test it. I couldn't imagine playing this with the keyboard. <laughs> so if I just double click that, it'll go straight to the emulator and it will open up with the ZSNES. 
which is pretty cool. Alrighty, so that's just the basic gist of what you want to do. You'll definitely want to make a copy of the original and then rename it. All you do is right click to rename it. I'm sure this is stuff y'all know, you know, but some people may not know that. I mean, you have, you have to start somewhere. And uh, every time you edit a level and you're done editing a level, I always make a copy of, I save it and then I make a copy of it. That way, if you do have a, a major error after, after you edit a level, when you start editing another level, if you have a major error, at least you will still have the level that you, uh, you at least you'll have the progress that you'd already made and you won't lose all of it. All right, so this is uh, what the icon looks like on your desktop. It says AAM and editor, and this is shortcut to the desktop. So I just double click that and I'm gonna open You'll click open. For the first time you do this, you're just going to go to open. Of course, uh, you'll go to recent ROMs after you've um, after you've already done it for a little while. After you've done it. If you have to restart, you'll have to go to open though. And then I'm going to where I have my ROM saved. So I'm going to go to... Uh, notice how I have a copy of my Brutal Zombies Aim Neighbors. That one actually is clean. I haven't edited it or anything. And I haven't been I haven't been testing it, but it's the exact same as this one right here. And then I just made a copy. Now uh, this is another another testing thing I've done. This one actually has spikes on it, and I actually have eight levels imported in there, and I still have my spikes and lightning and stuff working. I pretty much given up on keeping the spikes and lightning and all that because you can make a pretty good hack without it. It seems like when you edit the uh, when you edit the level titles, it messes up. It messes up uh, the spikes and lightning and stuff. All right, so I've gone to level nine. In order to open a level, I'm just kind of zooming along here. I'm not. I'm so used to doing this, I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing, but to what I'm saying, I'm supposed to be teaching y'all. But uh, all you do is you click the little blue thing here after you've imported a ROM successfully. And you can pick whatever level you want to go to. So this is the map for level 9, Toxic Terrors. Okay, so this is the very original canon level 9. Has been completely unedited. Nothing's been changed on it. But that's about to change. Now, by the way, um, for some reason as I'm recording this, it's only showing. It's kind of cutting off the top of the, top of the window and the very bottom of the window. Which, you know, is really not that important. Um, you can't hardly see the icons on the bottom and stuff, but if I minim if I restore down, you can actually see what the whole window looks like. It's just smaller. So, it just says ZAM in level editor. Uh, I waste so much time. Alright, so, as in this first part, we're just going to kind of go through the, the main things here. So, first is file. You can go back to recent ROMs, open up different ROMs that you've already opened. Uh, here's where you save... Now, emulator, I've never got this to work. I've never gotten this to work. I honestly am not sure about it, but it's really unnecessary because I've already showed you, uh, and I will, at least at the very end of this, I'll show you how to run it in the emulator after you download the ZS and the S. And then uh, edit. On edit, there aren't very many features. You can do uh, undo, redo, but that's already up here anyway, so really, it's, I never really use the edit for that. Um, cut, copy, paste. I never use any of those things either because I just use Control V for paste, Control X for cut, and Control C for copy. If I want to copy an enemy or cut an enemy or, or, a, uh, or if I want to cut or copy an item or something, I usually just use those, those uh, um, hotkeys there instead of you know, actually going all the way to the edit menu. And then select all. I don't really ever do that. Uh, it might be fast to do that, but uh, I find that pretty risky. Just my personal thing. And then passwords. You can actually see all the passwords. Notice how these are all the canon passwords. I recommend not changing the passwords until you're completely done with everything. This won't really cause an error, but it just makes it a lot easier to have the original passwords when you're for when you're testing the hack. Makes it a lot easier just to have the original. Because after you generate no passwords, you're not going to have those memorized, you know, and you'd have to write them all down and stuff. So I would just, that's just something that personally I'm going to do at the very end. 
and uh, all you do is you just click generate new passwords down here so next view now view um, unhandled exception yeah don't ever click that let's uh, try to open it again yeah unhandled exception is something that you don't want to ever see <laughs> you never want to see that and uh, a lot of times the first level that will mess up is 33b curse of the pharaohs and uh, fortunately it looks all normal so that's good 22b is another one that usually messes up okay so those didn't mess up so we're fine yeah uh, don't click that that's something i never use and obviously as you say uh, it's kind of risky some of these things are risky don't use them um, tile priority i never use that either now a hundred percent seventy five percent this just makes it smaller like uh, for very large levels like level 40 for example that you can't see the whole level you might want to do this but of course it makes it smaller and it's kind of harder to see individual things i prefer just keeping it all 100 percent 50 percent just makes it even smaller so just keep it at 100 percent all right now so getting to the juicy stuff level the level tab the level tab you have export which is where you will once you're completely done with your level um i click i use the export and then you're going to pick where you're going to save it so uh i haven't really done anything to this but uh say it has the save as option and uh i have a folder for my inside my game roms folder i have an individual folders for my original hack and also my brutal hack and uh, you can see the names of the levels here so that's where I would save that as but we haven't done anything to this so there's no reason to save it and you definitely want to export it um, sometimes you may even want to export it before you save it just in case there's gonna be an unhandled exception because if there is a major error you can always import it back imports the opposite Import is like if uh, if somehow I did mess up and I had to restart with a brand new um, Canon ROM, I could just import all of my levels back in. I'm sorry this first part's kind of boring. Just uh, kind of going over the things. Copy as text, never use that. Paste from text, never use that either. Edit title. This is where uh, you can rename the level. And I'm not going to change this title just yet. That's something I'll do later, but you can actually change the colors. You see there, you can change the colors. I think it was originally red. And uh, all you do is you just click on the text and you can change it to whatever you want it to be. You can also add words to this, to this frame. You can add words to this frame. You can delete words. All you have to do is delete it. You just uh, select it and then delete. So it's pretty, you can also center horizontally or vertically so pretty nice definitely something of course i found that live uh changing the level titles will mess up the spikes and stuff but honestly you can create a pretty good hack without having the spikes and lightning and stuff in it just uh if you haven't played my original hack i it would be awesome if you do that and i appreciate any feedback i think it turned out pretty good continuing on level you also have settings okay now settings and uh, in the next part, we'll get more into this, into what I, you know, going by what I want this level to be. Well, we'll go ahead and do that right now. And I may change this later. I'm thinking I want this, this is, I'm going to keep it to be a grass level. One thing to note is, this is really important, by the way. You need to have the same amount of grass tile levels. You need to have the same amount of tiles, same amount of mall factory, same amount of castle, same amount of office. And the same amount of beach pyramid levels as in the canon as in the original or else you will end up having an error from my experiences so what i'm doing for my brutal hack here um and if you notice from my original hack i ended up losing 12b and 33b because of all the things that i didn't know then that i do know now of course there may be more that i still don't know but if there is more you know as i learn i will definitely update this project i'll add more to it but uh for the time being we're just gonna do 
a few parts as I, you know, edit the whole level. So we have grass, so I'm gonna keep it grass. And I'm actually gonna change this to standard. Right now it's on fall, because level nine was originally fall level. And I think I want the music to be zombie panting music for, for what I'm doing for, with this level. Now, this thing right here, this unknown thing right uh, that's directly underneath the music. Um, different numbers do different things. These have to do with the sounds that some of the enemies make. So, for example, right now it's on zero. Zero is Chainsaw Maniacs. So if you have zero selected and you have Chainsaw Maniacs in the level, you will actually hear their chainsaws. Number one is Werewolves. So if you have one selected, you will hear the, hear the werewolves howl. However, if you have zero selected and you have werewolves in the level, you will not hear the werewolves howl. Um, number two, from my knowledge, it doesn't do anything. I don't think it does. I don't think it does anything. It's unused. Three, however, is uh, evil dolls and vampires and Doctor Tun. So, if you have zero or one selected, or two for that matter, and you have evil dolls and vampires, they'll be silent in the level. And number four doesn't do anything. None of these other numbers do anything. So, don't select them. You may end up with unhandled exception. I think I want to have werewolves in this level. So, I'm going to select one. And to be honest with you, I actually have not thought much about what I want this level to be. So, we'll kind of hopefully figure out as we go along so obviously um if you plan on it being a werewolf level if you don't have pallet yeah, i can't talk if you don't have pallet fate selected you're not gonna have werewolves anyway now this is really really important and this actually can cause some uh some strange glitches okay you have to have the pallet fade box selected then notice this this is a blank nothing selected on it right now if you were to save this level just as it is and then out and then actually play it with the emulator it would be screwed up really bad and uh, it would glitch to where you couldn't even see the screen it would do some kind of strange fade and you couldn't see anything so you always want to p uh, pick you always have to pick something that you want it to fade to and I'm gonna have it fade tonight Okay, and then always make sure that the sprite palette is automatic. And then these are these are your bonuses right here, which I haven't really quite decided how this level is going to go yet. So I don't know if weed cutting is something I want to have. Um, I think I will have vampires, so I'm going to have a vampire crossed out. But uh, I don't know if I'll have squid in it or not, so I don't know if fish fry will be necessary. So let's just kind of go with that for right now. We may change this later. So notice how it changed to your standard grass palette. It's pretty cool. But still pretty much the same level except it does have a palette fade. So if I were to play this level right now, these tourists would transform after time. So last tab is help. No, no, I hadn't done. Last uh, the next tile is tools. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, paintbrush which I actually never use um, paintbrush for anything. I'm actually not really quite familiar with some of the, there are a lot of things on this level editor that I don't really find useful or I find glitchy like that one thing I just showed you earlier in the edit or view menu. Uh, tile suggest, I'll, I don't really find that helpful too. I think it's where you click on a tile and the editor will suggest tiles that would go good with that. It's like it's telling you what to wear or something. <laughs> it's like if you have a red shirt, it's telling you what would match well with it. But I don't really find that very useful. Okay, then you have your rectangle select. This is the thing I most commonly use. And notice how all these same things are right up here. So honestly, never really use the uh, tools menu because everything's up there anyway. Then you have your pencil select, which is... I actually do use this one. This is really handy. If like uh, if you want to create multiple of the same tiles at the same time, but scattered around the uh, around the level. So like if I wanted to, I can show this off real quick. If I move this over. 
because it may be actually a while before I use this. Uh, if I do the pencil select, well first you gotta get your tiles up. Now if I do the pencil select, I wanna pick the tiles that I wanna change. So I'm gonna pick this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, I'm just gonna pick those four. So notice how I did scattered tiles around. And I'm wanting to make trees there. So I would pick this tile for tree, the top of the tree. So now I'd have to go this and then click off of it. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing again for the bottom of the trees. And then I would put this tile, 6-5, make the bottom of the trees. Very, very handy, very, very quick. I honestly don't use it very much, except like I just showed then, whenever there are multiple places that are scattered where I wanna use the same type of tile. That's when that really comes in handy. All right, so anything else on the tools menu? Um, items, uh, tile select. I don't really ever use that. The only ones I really use are the rectangle select and the pencil select. I really don't know what tile select does, to be honest with you. I think it's, hmm, let me just see. Oh, okay, I see it picks that actually is pretty neat. It actually picks where you have the same tiles. So you can actually see how, uh, you can see where all the same tiles are being used. So that's the only tile where, that's the only place where that particular tile there is being used. And uh, this is the only place where that tile is being used. But yeah, that's actually pretty neat. I never really use it though, to be honest, but it's kind of cool to see at least. Not really something helpful when it comes to editing, but at least you can kind of see uh, where different tiles are. Alright, and then you have items, which is where you can, uh, you know, like if I wanted to change this fire extinguisher to whatever, I'd select it and I'd change it. But uh, we'll go over all of this later. All of these things here, all these tools are all up here anyway, and they're pretty self-explanatory. And then help, that's contents thing. There's really not too much here. It takes you to this site. I'm guessing that Piranha Plant made, kind of as a read me text thing. Um, just gives you some advice here. And I'm not gonna read this to you, you know, as, so as not to bore you to death, because I probably already am boring you to death. I don't know how this is gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm really sorry, this probably is not gonna be the most interesting project, but you know, for those of you that are interested in maybe making your own hack, I'm hoping you find it helpful. But uh, you can kind of read that on your own time if you are interested. And uh, I honestly didn't use it very much to tell you the truth. So. And then uh, the last thing is about. And all it says here is uh, version 09. Icons are from modified from silk icon set. Yeah, you can just say that. Copyright 2011 by Product Play. All right. All right, and my friends, that is the end of this first part. In the next part, we're actually going to get right into editing this bad mom of a level. And uh, you're going to see just how to use this editor. So I hope that y'all enjoy this. I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, by the way, to make the level fit how you want to and to make this over here be what size you want it to be, you can, uh, all you do is you just move this, you know, however, you know, you want, you know, whatever position you want it that works best for you. The way I do it, I like being able to see the whole level, if possible. You know, that way I can kind of have a broad general view and kind of get it in my mind how I want things to work out. But uh, this has been Sky Hurricane 89. Join me in the next part where we actually take on editing level 9 of my brutal hack. Stay awesome, my friends. Goodbye.